Don't smile, y'all. We don't care if you don't have all your teeth. Smile. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are honored to have you in the house with us this morning. And we have some extraordinary ministers and preachers that are going to be bringing forth that word today. So right now, we're going to prepare ourselves in praise and worship to receive the word of those that God will place before us today to create in us a clean spirit, those that will give us the word, that bread of life. If you're coming on our Facebook page and on our other social media platforms, we thank you so much for tuning in. We are so honored to be in the house. My name is Valerie Adams, and on the organ, I have Brother James Rucker, and on the drums, my nephew, Jeffrey Manigal. We are so honored, once again, to be used by God. And if you are under the sound of my voice, I thank God for you right now. I thank God that as you slept last night, no hurt, harm, or danger came to you. I thank God that he blessed the food you ate, the visions your eyes saw, the steps you took. And my prayer is that everything around you be blessed and highly favored in the name of Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but there's power in the name of Jesus. When you speak the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, he's gonna break every chain, to break every chain. Listen, y'all, there's an army rising up. You may not be able to see that army, y'all, but there's an army rising up. Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Now here's what I need y'all to do. I need you to just close your eyes. And I need you to visualize that chain that you want the Lord to break. Be it de depression, be it illness, or diabetes, cancer, whatever it may be. Or that child you just can't seem to get right with God. Or that situation you just don't know how it's going to work. And I want you to close your eyes and put your mind on that situation. That chain that you want God to break. Because there is power when we speak that name over any situation. It just seems to lose its power. It doesn't have it on us anymore. Because when you focus on your faith. Your fear will dissipate, I guarantee you. When you focus on the love of Jesus and how he came and hung down and bled on Calvary for our sins, oh, that situation don't have as much power as it used to. So close your eyes and go into that chain, that chain that only you and the Lord know about, that chain that you promised you would never tell another soul, that chain that you promised to take to your grave. I want you to go to that chain and loose it, loose it in the name of Jesus. I want you to see the blood of Jesus pouring over that situation, pouring over that chain that you just still to keep your dragon on. I want you to let go of that chain and give it to Jesus. You get the opportunity right here, right now to leave that chain in this church. Leave it here at the altar. You don't have to take it home with you. You don't have to move another step with it. You don't have to hold on to it no longer. Surrender it. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. So surrender it. Surrender it in the name of Jesus. Speak over it. Speak over it. Oh, I dare you to speak over it. I dare you to speak over that illness, that cough, that headache, whatever it may be, that ache in your body. I dare you to speak the name of Jesus over it. 
Oh, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus. We speak over everything, God, that will hinder us from being of service to you. Oh, 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 oh. there is power in your name, your name, your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There is power, power, wonder working power in your name, Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Lord, break that chain. Break that chain, Jesus. Break every one of my chains. There is power. Can you feel that power? In the name, in the name of Jesus. Speak his name. There is power. Oh, in the name, in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, oh, it's going to break every one of your chains. I promise it will break your chains. So, Father God, we honor you right now, God. We stop in the middle of this day. We stop right here, God, as our minds are racing to think of all the things that we may have to do. We stop right now, God, and give you glory. We stop right now, God, and give you thanks for all the things that we have already taken for granted this day alone, God. We stop right now, God, right in our steps, God, and we ask that you continue to do what you did yesterday, God. We thank you for that word, God, that is never failing, that is always reliable, God. And that even though it's been spoken so many years, that word still lives, God. We thank you for that living word, God. We thank you, God, for being who you are, what you are, when you are, and how you are, God. Oh, we may not know the answer to some situations, God, but we're going to leave them situations here with you right now today, God. We're going to ask, Lord, that you create in us a clean spirit, God. Give us a new way to walk, a new way to talk. That when others will see us, God, they'll see less of us and more of you, God. Remove from us anything that's not pleasing in your sight, God. Oh, we know, Lord, that you and you alone, God, have all the power and all the glory and all the honor. So we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. Thank you for this Friday, Lord. Thank you for right now, Jesus. Thank you for the next breath that we're going to take, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the steps we haven't made, Lord. Thank you. For the food we haven't eaten yet, Lord. Thank you. For the things our eyes have not seen yet. Thank you, Lord. For the things our hearts are feeling, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For everything you're going to do, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy of our highest praise, Jesus. You're worthy. 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 You're worthy, you're worthy. Worthy. And all those years ago, Jesus, when you sacrificed your life on this good ride, when they nailed you to the cross, and they called you everything but a child of God, when you knew the outcome of this thing, we want to say thank you, Jesus. What a love, 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 what a love. I've never known a love like this. That you would hung, die, and bled on Calvary for my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. Of my highest praise, Jesus. I'm going to give you everything I've got, Lord. I'm going to give you everything I've got, Lord. Because you deserve it. Every fiber of my being, everything that I am is because you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as I look back over my life and I think things over. Thank you, Lord, for the car accident that almost was. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. I don't do the things that I used to do, so thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the tears of joy I cry, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I even thank you for the ones that were of pain. Because when I was at my lowest, you were at your highest, God. When I didn't know the situation or how it was going to work out, God. And I kept on tug of war with it. When I gave it to you, Lord, it lost all power. I want to say.
say thank you, Lord, for right now. Can you thank him, y'all? This is not for any form of fashion. Don't do this for me. Don't do it for the neighbor sitting next to you. Don't do it to impress anybody. This is about your own personal, individual walk with the Lord. He knows your heart anyway, so if your praise ain't true, he gonna know about it. But I want your praise to be sincere. You gotta be sincere, y'all. You gotta be sincere in your praise. Just God. And even if you aren't, he continually looks beyond your faults and provides every one of your needs. So we thank you, God, that even though we may not be what you want us to be, we're not what we used to be, God. We thank you, Jesus. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise, Jesus. Because you're so worthy, you're the worthy, 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 Lord. Oh, I'm still gonna break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, oh Father God, oh break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Y'all can leave them chains here, y'all. Gonna break every chain, every one of those chains he will. Break every, 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 break every chain, Lord. Break every chain, Lord. You know it, Father. Break every chain, Lord. Oh, God. Break every chain. Oh, break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, Hosanna. Hey, Hosanna, that I blessed be the rock of my salvation. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, God. We invite you into this service, Lord, right now, Jesus. Come on in and have your way, Lord. Come on in, Lord, and do what you do, Lord. Yes, God. 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 I surrender, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. My soul says, yes, God. My soul says, yes, God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Thy will, not mine, be done. Yes, God. Yes, God. When I don't know the answer, yes, God. When I'm in doubt or in fear, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. 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 Yes, God.
to the show. What, what, what do you know about my city, yo, yo? The phone don't ring when I grab my teeth. I don't have no fear because I know he's gonna fix it. He's alright. He's better than alright. He's better than alright. He's better than alright. He's better than alright. Right. Right. Gonna fix it. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty, 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 mighty God we serve, yo. Come on now. Thank you, thank 
to let you know how thankful we are. Because, Lord, without you, without you dying on the cross for our sins, and without your blood, we would have no hope. But we have hope in you, Lord God. We have hope for our family members. We have hope for our friends. We have hope for the people who's not in the fold yet because of you and because of the faith that you have given us. So Jesus, we're here not because of ourselves, because you drew us in. Thank you by the Holy Ghost who is filled with truth and you revealed the truth to us because we were all deceived because of the fall. So now, Lord, we come to give you praise. We come to give you honor. We come to give you glory and to give you thanksgiving. And we thank you for anything that we have done that wasn't pleasing in your sight. We thank you that you forgive us and just help us to forgive ourselves and forgive others yes. for the things that they have done to us. Oh, Lord, what a mighty God we serve. And we just want to thank you. We love you. You got people probably here from all different nations and places. You did that, Lord. You did that. You touch every nation. So, Jesus, we just ask that you present this prayer to the Father on our behalf. And we'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and thanksgiving for all you have done for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God be the glory. God be the glory for all the things that he has done. Good morning. 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 It's Good Friday. Good morning. I heard you in here singing up a storm. Amen. God be the glory. God be the glory. My name is my name is Paul Martin. I'm the pastor here at St. Mark. Uh, we call it St. Mark Pentecostal Missionary Baptist Church. Well, now, wait a minute. This ain't your typical AME church. You, you ain't got to clap like this. I came to tell you, if you feel like shouting, you better shout. If you feel like clapping, you better clap. If you feel like giving God some glory, you do it. Because it was on a good Friday that he died for you and somebody to be ready to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 I, I just want to greet you for all those visitors here. I, I'm just so exciting, excited about this day. This is the first time that we have had the seven last words here at St. Mark. And uh, we just want to greet you and welcome you uh, in the name of Jesus of Christ. Of all the churches you could have come to on this Good Friday, you could have stayed in your bed and, and signed on. And, 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 you know, from the Church of the Living Sheets and and got your good Friday on, but you chose to press your way to service. And I think you're going to be blessed. I think you're going to be blessed. I know, I know you're going to be blessed. Again, for those worshiping you, worshiping online, that's all right if you do it. You know, at least you're here. You're here, whether it's in the Church of the Living Sheets or not. You're here, and I welcome you, uh, all of you who are worshiping with us on online, those of you who are in the overflow, those of you who are in the sanctuary, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am the pastor of this church, and it is my honor and pleasure to uh, be in the presence of these distinguished great men and women of God on this Good Friday, Seven Last Words. A couple of things I want to bring to your attention. Uh, I am not Nichelle Scott Gordon. She was feeling under the weather, and so I said, don't worry about it. I'll do the announcements. A couple of things I do want to bring to your attention. I heard that on Sunday uh, there's going to be some services in some churches. I heard, I heard, I heard. So on Sunday, no matter where you may be, if you're in Newark, you could be at Abyssinia. 
If you if you in in, 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 in Brooklyn, you could be at Allen. If if you in South Orange, you could be at First Baptist. If if, if you out in Morristown, you could be at Bethel. If if you down in Rawway, you could be at Ebenezer. We got churches up the nose for you. So you on Sunday, the day that our God got up. Uh, you can you, you everybody should press their way to service. So that's one thing. So you can you can come to service on Sunday. And of course, we would love to have you here at St. Mark, uh, a church where we uh, believe in spiritual growth. And when we talk about spiritual growth, we talk about generational empowerment. And we talk about uh, 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 regaining our, our faith. And uh, we talk about uh, uh, outreach. And we talk about worship and teaching the word of God and radical hospitality. So, so we would welcome you to come here on Sunday at 10 a.m., but we have many churches where you can worship with us. And then on, uh, as you move into after, uh, we'll still be in the Easter season, on Tuesday we have a grief-filled ministry that is led by the only lady of St. Mark's, my, my wife, Maria Martin. You stand, Maria. You understand that? Everybody see my fine wife. My, there you go. Everybody see my So she she leads a grief ministry every Tuesday. See, I know I know where I'm eating tonight, so I know what I had to do. So uh, every, every Tuesday we have a grief ministry. It is on our Zoom line. You're welcome to attend. And then on, on Wednesdays we have Bible study. And then we have a Bible study for men in conjunction with St. Matthew Church and the First Baptist Church of South Orange. And that is every Saturday at 8 a.m. And we welcome all men to come and have uh, uh, and learn about being authentic men in, the, in this time. And so uh, we invite you to, to participate in that. And then tomorrow, uh, for those of you who are married or those who want to be married or thinking about getting married or should be married. And you know who I'm talking about. Some of y'all should be married, Lord, living up in sin. Y'all should be married. Uh, I am told that at Abyssinian Baptist Church in Newark at 10 a.m. tomorrow, they will be conducting a class or a seminar on, on marriage ministry, the marriage ministry, and that is uh, Reverend Brooker who can tell you about that if she so chooses. But we would, you would, we, she would love to have you participate in that program. And then for those of you, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna hear the word of the Lord today, and that's gonna be today. But tonight, uh, there's also gonna be a number of seven last word um, services, and our own executive minister, Reverend Rushdan, will be preaching at St. James AME Church in Manalapan. Amen. God be the glory. And that's at 7 p.m. So I think those are all the announcements, Reverend. Reverend, I just made Brother McFoy a pastor. Um, Brother McFoy, those are all the announcements. Did I get them all? He said, no, there's something else going on. Oh, um, on April 21st, uh, on April 21st, we will have our divine nine services. Uh, we're inviting all the fraternities and sororities to come worship with us on April 21st here at St. Mark. And if you are one of those, uh, part of any of those organizations, we would welcome you to come. And, and guess what? We're going to feed you. And in the AME way, you will get chicken. I'm going to tell you right now. You, you're going to get some chicken. You, we're going to give you some chicken out the nose. You're going to have chicken. You're going to have chicken. All right. You came here to hear a word from the Lord. Amen? You came here to hear a word of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to give you the first two min the first three ministers. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about them. The first word will be delivered by the Reverend Dr. Sidney Williams. He's the pastor of Bethel Church in Morristown. Uh, I, I love his website because he talks, his first thing he talked about was being a faithful husband to his only lady, Teresa Williams. And he's a father to four children. He has a profound and prophetic, um, uh, he, he preaches from a profound, profound and prophetic mantle that distinguish him, distinguishes him as a remarkable visionary. Uh, he hails from the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but he has some ties to North Carolina, and, and he's also uh, uh, has some relationships with people in Louisiana. He was raised in a Pentecostal tradition. He, he preached his first sermon at age 15, but, but but because he was 15 and he wanted to do a, be a little buck wild, he, he waited a little while before he, he allowed the collar to get around his, his neck. Uh, he is the 51st pastor of Bethel Church in Morristown, New Jersey. He's the adjunct professor at Drew Theological Seminary and a senior lecturer at Payne Theological Seminary in Wilberforce, Ohio. 
for y'all who don't know, that's where Wilberforce University is. That's the oldest and private black institution in America, the best institution in the world. Just want to let y'all know that. And your pastor is a, a member or came from Wilberforce University. So uh, I always got to put that plug in whenever I can. Um, he has also lectured uh, in, in, in graduate business programs and, and taught corporate executives from Asia to Europe and the United States. He's an author. Uh, morning Meditations, 100 Days to Believing You're Successful and Fishing Differently, Ministry Formation in the Marketplace. You can find both of those on Amazon. Don't be going to your phone right now. You can do it right when you leave. All right, but you can find these on Amazon. Morning Meditations, 100 Days to Believe in You're Successful, to believe in, to believe in You're Successful and Fishing Differently. He's obtained a Bachelor of Business Administration from Howard University, the original HU. Uh, he earned an MBA from Wharton School of Business in 1994. He received his Master's of Divinity from Wesley Theological Seminary. And he has his Doctor of Ministry degree from Payne Theological Seminary. He's committed himself to studying the intersection of the the theology and economics in this current world. Um, when I went to God in prayer for him, for asking God, who would you want to bring a word to the people? And his name was first and foremost on my mind. He is a great man of God, and you are going to be blessed by the word which he is going to bring. And then the second word will be uh, given to you by the Reverend Paul P. Martin. And uh, he's this, this, this preacher. Yeah, don't, 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 don't treat him too bad. He, 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 he's. He doesn't run in these circles, but he's he's okay. So just 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 give him some grace and some mercy. And then uh, the third preacher is Reverend I. And I always mispronounce your first name, Ayana K. Michu Brooker Esquire. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes, yes. She actually came from this church. Uh, was raised in this church. She's the daughter, uh, the proud daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Luna I. Michu. She is happily married to Dr. Johnny D. Brooker, Jr., the pastor of Abyssinian Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. Amen. They have one amazing son. Where's your son? Where's where? Uh, stand up. Now, now, when you stand up, you better not have that alpha shirt on. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, okay. He, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Don't he behind me? He behind me. So I gotta, I gotta be, you know, I have my, have my eye on my back like that, you know. Um, she's a product of the East Orange School System, beginning at then Elmwood Elementary, and graduated from Clifford J. High, Scott High School. Uh, after graduating high school, she accepted at she was accepted at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, where she received a. Uh, uh, a degree in Aviation Business Administration. She received her Juris Doctorate from Seton Hall University in 2001. But at a very early age, she knew she had been called to the ministry, and so she pursued her Ministry of Divinity degree uh, from uh, Andersonville Theological Seminary, and she was ordained on May 2018 in the New Jersey District Missionary Baptist Association. And she became the first female ordained minister at Mount Zion Baptist Church in Dover, New Jersey. She is an author and, a, and, and, a, and published a book, Your Pastor's Wife Needs Your Prayers. I, I, I'm going to have to get that and give it to your first lady. She, If you are the pastor's wife, you need prayer. You, you definitely need prayer. Did I say you need prayer? You, you need prayer. Uh, uh, this is a devotional book for African-American, Latina, and Asian women. And in 221, she co-authored another book entitled Rhymes of the Best, 40 Devotions for Women on the Move. She's a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go. My sister, you got that in, so she's happy about that. A lifelong member of the Eagles Flight Squadron, a non-for-profit aviation school here in the city of East Orange. She's a member of Cooperman Bit Barnabas Medical Center Neonatal Intensive Care Parent Advisory Board, and she volunteers in the NICU on a regular basis. She is truly a woman 
of many talents and gifts. Let me tell you about her. She has a spirit that comes from God. A pleasant spirit. But don't cross her. I, I can tell that. Don't cross her. Because she will pray for you and pray P-R-E-Y on you if you cross her. So are we going to, can we have, I'm, 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 I'm probably, you know, this is governed by the Holy Spirit. Can we have a selection? After which we'll hear the first word, then the second word, and I believe the third word. Let me just check on this. And for those of you who have a pro program. So after the next selection, the next voice you will hear from above is from the Reverend Dr. Sidney Williams, the pastor of Bethel AME Church. Come on, y'all, put them hands together just like that. I can tell I got me a choir up in here, so I'm gonna need y'all to help me out. Here we go. Give our sister and I'm just a clap of praise <laughs> to the angel of this house, Pastor Martin. We thank you for the invitation. He walks with kings and never loses a common touch. I know because he's driven to Marstown to serve Thanksgiving meals to those who didn't have homes to go to uh, side by side with him. So he didn't tell me what to do. Sometimes we get elevated and we forget where we come from. I'm thankful that even though he's a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, he still knows <laughs> how to be a servant of all. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, Christ our Redeemer, we thank you. Hide me behind this sacred desk. May the meditations of my heart, the words of my mouth, the example of my sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name. First word comes from Luke chapter 23, the 34th verse. Father, forgive them, for they know not 
what they are doing. I must confess, I have problems with forgiveness. I would have rather preached any other word than the first word. Because in my observation, they knew what they did. Now, I don't know about you if you've been stabbed in the back by somebody you trusted. You've been arrested by the police for no reason. Held behind, be, be held against your will. Falsely accused. As we sit here right now, there are people sitting in prison falsely accused, innocent, behind bars. You want me to come on Good Friday and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is state-sanctioned violence. Jesus did no wrong. They hung his black body on the cross and ridiculed him. And you want me to preach, Father, forgive them? You want me to forgive the people that killed George Floyd? Trayvon Martin? I'm sorry. The people that walked into the church and killed those nine people in Bible study at Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston. Father, forgive them? No, Jesus. No, Jesus. They knew what they were doing. But, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm committed to studying the text. I'm committed to the assignment. But, but I need you to understand that this is not a pardon from sin. This is not a get out of jail pass. The wages of sin still equal death. And just because he says, Father, forgive them, don't mean you're going to heaven. I wanted to study the text because right before he says what he says on the cross, he said, for the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs of those that have never bore children and the breasts that have never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will, they ha what will happen when it is dry? See, be clear, because Jesus says, Father, forgive them, does not remove them from punishment. Just because we're taught to move in nonviolence doesn't mean we ain't mad. Doesn't mean we're not going to stop fighting for social justice. And I'm not laughing at your jokes because it ain't funny. When you kill black and brown people that are innocent and put them behind bars and make money off of them and judges have to go to prison because we found out the prison pipeline was organized to put black and brown people in prison on purpose. Yeah, I can forgive you, but be clear. We need to talk about what kind of forgiveness we talking about. They, they forgave that brother that came and shot nine people in the church in Charleston, South Carolina. But that don't mean we don't want you to go to jail. It was up to me. He wouldn't have made it bird King. But the problem when we read this text, we read it through a 2024 mindset rather than a first century mindset. See, because now they want to teach us forgiveness means I absolve you of the responsibility for what you did. See, that's why they make fun of Christians because they think when we say we forgive, that means we also forgive. Just because we say we forgive doesn't mean I ain't mad about what happened. Doesn't mean there won't be consequences for what happened. So, so when we listen to this first century prophet who was hanging on the cross, don't read it through a 2024 lens. See, because during that period, the Greco-Roman period, there was a different understanding of forgiveness. The one that has the superior ethical standing can forgive those who have a lesser standing. In other words, is really what he should have said, you don't know what you just did, you got me messed up. That's, that, that's the modern translation. You, you don't know what you're doing. You got me messed up. If you knew who you were dealing with. My, my mother would say this way. You don't you, you uh, cast a ticket uh, that, that, you can't, that you don't have the responsibility. You don't whoop tickets. You know, you, you, you're selling whoop tickets. But, but you're about to meet somebody that can put you in hell for the rest of your life. And, and so, so when we read it, uh, we got to read it through the first century lens. The ethics of forgiveness does not negate the ethics of punishment. The wages of sin are still death. Just because he forgives them don't mean they don't need to repent. Unconditional forgiveness is considered beneficial to the injured party. Jesus ain't really thinking about them right now. He's focused on his assignment. 
His assignment is, y'all are less than. You are the created. I am the creator. So in my grace, in my mercy, I'm going to forgive you right now because if I did what I have the authority to do, I could destroy everything and everybody right now. So I'm going to spare you for the minute. Let, let me see if I can make it live. There are times going to my mother's house when, when I knew I was in trouble. And, and, and I would say, Mama, I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. But she had the power and the authority to give me grace. Don't mean I won't get punished later. Don't mean the next time I fail to take out the trash, it won't be no consequences. It just means in this moment, I'm going to let you sleep. In this moment, I'm going to give you some grace because you know not what you are doing. The Greco-Roman forgiveness discourse does not privilege the ethics of forgiveness over and against the ethics of punishment. Emperors could give pardon. Just like in Cayman, New Jersey, the governor can give a pardon. It's not saying I'm waiving your sentence, but I have the authority vested in me to pardon you. You understand what I'm saying? So what Luke does in the gospel, and he's the only one of the gospel writers to do this, look, Luke wants Theophilus, the Roman wealthy man, to understand that, that what, what really happens on the cross is, is, is Jesus is demonstrating his kingdom authority over and against the empire's authority. This is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of resistance. It is a sign of rebellion. He is telling the people that have beat him all night long, I have authority over you. See, so let me make it live for us because some of us got to go back to work. Some of us got to go to annual conference. Some of us got to go deal with some people that mean us no good. But I need you to understand that you are a child of the most high God. When we say that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that, that doesn't mean that, 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 that attacks won't come, that sticks and stones will break my bones, but you don't understand who you're messing with. See, you keep pushing my back against the wall. You don't understand. I won't be defeated. Still, I rise. Press me to the ground. I will get back up. You are not defeating me. You took your best shot, and I'm still standing, and the work isn't finished. Father, forgive them, because they don't understand. Family members playing games, setting you up. They don't understand that God called you to be a blessing to the family. Church members playing games, they don't understand. You've been assigned to the church to be a blessing even to your enemies. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When I show up to work next week, you tried to set me up, tried to fire me, but you don't understand that God sent me here, anointed me for such a time as this. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We might have been hoodwink, bamboozled, Brought on the slave ship. But Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We are the sons and daughters of the kings and queens. We've been kissed by the sun. We are the soul of the nation. The reason why the nation is great, because of the soil that we cover. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. I ain't weak. You might be weak by worldly standards. But the Bible says, when I'm weak, I'm strong. It was good for me to be afflicted because it reminded me where my help comes from. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Forgive them. They don't know who they're messing with. But I know my God has a plan for me to prosper and not fail. All things work together for my good because I'm called to his purpose. All things Work for your good. What the devil meant for evil, God says, I'm going to turn it around. Give me a couple days. I'll turn it around. That job you lost, give me a couple days. Something new is coming. That wife that left you, the spouse that left you, the one that cheated on you, God says, hold on to my changing hand. The best is still yet to come.
I'm ready to run around this church. The second word comes from the gospel according to Luke. The 23rd chapter, starting at the 39th verse. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Thus hear the reading of the word of God. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and, and, and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing done nothing wrong. Right. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Mm. He, meaning Jesus, replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Gracious God, bless this food we're about to receive. For the nourishment of our body. In Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. For the next few minutes that are mine, I want to pre preach to you on a question of perspective. A question of perspective. This, this, this particular scripture, the two criminals on the cross, uh, and their response to Jesus has always been a source of uneasiness for me. The author, in laying out this pericope, leaves us with a question, but is void of an answer. What was it that caused one criminal to accept Jesus and the other to reject him? I, 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 I poured through the scriptures. I uh, looked at different translations. I perused the commentaries. I, 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 I sat down and, and I've asked a few theologians. I, 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 and all by all accounts, there appeared to be nothing or no one to address my query. Why would two people with similar backgrounds and similar experiences and similar sentences have dissimilar reactions. Both men, uh, they, were, they, they both were men, so there was no gender distinction. Uh, uh, they both got fair trials. How do I know? Because one of the criminals admitted we are being punished justly. So is, this is not the case where either of them could claim that they were innocent. Both, both were of the same economic status. Uh, they were both poor. H how do I know that, Reverend Williams, that they were poor and not rich? Well, rich people rarely get convicted of crimes. They never get sentenced to time. <laughs> yeah, both, both, both deserve punishment. They were carbon copies of the other. Uh, they both one, but what, what, what would cause one to reject Jesus and the other to accept it? Uh, and if we were to open up our Bibles. Uh, what, 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 what got to me is both spent time with Jesus. Uh, uh, the Bible says that all three walked the Via Della Rosa. Uh, before they were crucified, they spent some time walking together, which means both criminals walked the same route 
as Jesus. Well, what's your point, preacher? Well, this should tell somebody that not everybody that walks with Jesus is going to the same place as Jesus. There are some church people, they ain't in here today, but there are some church people who claim to walk with Jesus, but the truth be told, they ain't never knew Jesus. It, it, it takes more than walking with him. You need to have a relationship with Jesus if you're going to get to the same place as Jesus. Oh, preach, Pricey. I'm doing the best I can. I, uh, so, so what is the difference which caused one to mock and the other to magnify? What, 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 what caused one to ask for proof and the other ask for forgiveness? Uh, what caused one to question and the other to be certain? I had to back this thing up. Uh, and, and I read verse 33, and, and it revealed to me, and, and I pray that it will reveal to you uh, uh, the difference of why each one came at this thing differently. Uh, uh, you don't have to read the verse. I'm going to give it to you. It, it says, they came to the place of the skull. They crucified him, meaning Jesus, along with the criminals, and one was on his right, and the other was on his left. Uh, uh, there lies the difference. Uh, these two men came to Jesus from different perspectives. Uh, Wayne Dyer, a self-help author, a motivational speaker, said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Uh, he Henry David Thoreau says, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. Uh, uh, both of the criminals saw Jesus, but they approached Jesus from two totally different perspectives. And the proof is right there in the scripture. One criminal said, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. Uh, see, the criminal wanted something from Jesus. The other criminal said, uh, remember me when you get to your kingdom. He declared the sovereignty of Jesus. He acknowledged the kingship of Jesus. And isn't that what passionate worship is all about? Acknowledging Jesus as king. And so, so we got to come to Jesus with the right perspective. Quit trying to show up on Sunday mornings with a mindset of what can we get from Jesus. And we got to come with a mindset that we are going to worship our Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too many of us come wanting Jesus' time, but we don't want to give Jesus a tithe. Uh -oh. oh, you're looking, y'all didn't shout amen to that, did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we want a favor from Jesus, but we ain't trying to make Jesus first in our life. Uh, Jesus, uh, making him a priority is a form of worship. Uh, we come looking for a blessing from Jesus, but we don't want to show no benevolence for anybody else. Benevolence is a form of worship. So my brothers and sisters, we got to change our perspective before it's too late. See, I've been pastoring just long enough to learn that what was true on that first Good Friday rings true today. The decision to be saved, the decision to be set free, the decision to be with Jesus in paradise is based on our perspective. Our perspective determines our response. So I leave you with this question. I'm going to take my seat. What is your perspective on Jesus? I mean, do you see Jesus to be adored, or are you just afraid? Do you see Jesus as a blessing or as a burden? Do you see Jesus as a deliverer or a deter, or a, de uh, a, deter a deterrer? Do you see Jesus and get excited, or are you running away like you embarrassed? Do you see Jesus as a forgiver, or are you finding faults with others? Do you see Jesus as grace, or are you handcuffed by your own guilt? Do you see Jesus as a helper, or you see him as a hindrance? Do you see Jesus to be idolized or to be ignored? Do you see Jesus with some joy, or you see him with some jealousy? Do you see Jesus with love, or are you caught up in worldly lust? 
Do you see Jesus performing miracles? Or are you too stuck in your own mess? Do you see Jesus for his priceless power? Or are you just trying to pimp my Jesus? Do you see Jesus with respect? Or do you see him with ridicule? Do you see Jesus as a savior? Or are you skeptical of his power? Do you believe that Jesus is the truth? Or have you been tricked by Satan? We must change our perspective. If we look at Jesus from the right perspective, the same perspective as the same criminal, it matters not the mistakes you made in the past. It matters not the circumstances of your birth. It matters not your life regrets. It matters not your lack of education. It matters not whether you purchase your hair or you just got a weave. It matters not what you ate last night. You got to come to Jesus with the right perspective. Heavenly Father, remember me despite all the things that I have done. And let me be with you today in paradise. You better change your perspective. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let me say that again. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah, pastor. You done set me up. You done set me up with all these pastors on this pulpit. Amen. But to God be all the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, I praise you, I bless you. I magnify your holy name for you are worthy to be praised. Thank you for this time, this place, this space, oh God. But most of all, thank you for this good Friday. This day you went to the cross for us. God, I pray that you hide me, oh God, so that only your word may be heard, oh God. And I pray that your word falls on good ground, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. I bring you greetings from the Abyssinian Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Johnny D. Brooker is my pastor. Amen. God bless all of you. God bless you, 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 and you, and all of you. Amen. I have the third word is coming to you from John 19. Verses 25 through 27. And it reads, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Well, I do have a word for you on this afternoon from the six minutes I was given. Amen. And the word is simply, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Tell your neighbor, hold on. Jesus endured so much at the cross in the past few days leading up to this at the cross experience. He endured the last supper. He endured the lies. He endured the deceit. He endured the agony. He endured the anticipation, the mocking, the unjust trials, the unjust judgments. He endured the dramatic walk up the Via Della Rosa. He endured the nails through his body. And through it all, his mother witnessed everything. As I was reflecting on this text, I, I couldn't help, Pastor Williams, I couldn't help but think about uh, uh, George Floyd and Trayvon Martin. I, I couldn't help but 
think about Philando Castile and Freddie Gray and Eric Gardner and, and the list goes on and on and on. I couldn't help but, but think about them and through it all, their mothers had to witness uh, these brutal deaths uh, countless times uh, on television and via social media. Can you imagine what was going on through Mother Mary's head as she stood there watching her son being humiliated publicly? She was the Mary enjoying herself at a wedding with Jesus in chapter 2, and now she is agonizing at Jesus' funeral in chapter 19. She was the Mary with the voice who told Jesus to do something when the wine ran out, but now she is voiceless. Why didn't she tell Jesus to do something? Why did she just stand there silent? Why? I thought about because a mother knows her child. She knew her son was Jesus the Christ. She knew he had a charge to keep and was about his father's business as he once told her. On the flip side, can you imagine how Jesus felt when he saw his mother agonize? He could have helped the situation. In fact, he could have come down from the cross. But in fact, he did help the situation. We have salvation on today because he stayed there. Amen. He could have changed the narrative at that moment. But in fact, we find that he did in fact change the narrative. You and I are sitting here today free. Hallelujah. We are free. At this moment in the text, Jesus saw his mother. Church, for, church, first point I need you to know if you're taking notes is hold on because Jesus sees you. He sees you when you're agonizing. He sees you when you are hurting. He sees you when you are going through something. He sees you when you are perplexed. He sees you when you are in pain. He sees all that you have witnessed in each chapter of your life. So don't ever think that you are out here by yourself. Secondly, I need you to hold on because Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. The word says he saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved. Jesus felt her sorrow. He felt her loneliness. So he rewarded her by giving her a new relationship. He put her in good hands. Yes, better than all states. Any disciples of Christ just standing by on this afternoon in need of a new relationship? Anybody here in need of true love? Any good hands in the church on this afternoon? Well, John, Jesus' beloved disciple told us, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall never perish, but have ever everlasting life. That's how much he loves us. Love always stands the test of times. Yes, love has to suffer sometimes. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. And last point, I'm almost done. Hold on, my brothers and my sisters, because Jesus got you. Yes, Jesus got you. He's making a way for you. In the text, he told his mother, woman, behold thy son. And he told his beloved disciple, John, son, behold thy mother. You see, John ran from Jesus when tough times hit, but he came back to the cross. John had been restored. John was now ready for responsibilities that he would have to face. And while all that had to happen, Jesus was making provisions. He knew there would be some tough times ahead and how important it is for us to be there for one another. He knew how important it is to have a shoulder to cry on. 
word, a person to laugh with, a person to share these vicissitudes of life. But please understand that through it all, Jesus got you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He's always got your back. He's always there for you, there for you, and there for you. Yes, he's waiting on you to restore you. So hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, my children. Hold on, preachers. Hold on, St. Mark. Hold on, Abyssinian. Hold on, Bethlehem. Hold Hold on, Newark, hold on, because Jesus, he sees you. Jesus, he loves you, and Jesus, he got you. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Amen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to preach that in about two weeks right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm, I'm going to preach that in two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Because y'all know y'all going to forget by Wednesday that two weeks I'm going to preach that one. Amen. Uh, are you having a good time? Are you getting a good word from the Lord? Amen. Amen. How many, how many want to be blessed today? How many want to get a breakthrough today? How many? Uh, today, 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 amen, amen. Well, here's the opportunity where you can participate in worship. Um, worship, in its true sense, means you bring something to Jesus. You, you can't worship with empty hands. Uh, everybody can give something to God. Uh, and so this is a time that you can participate in worship. Now listen, don't get don't let the don't let the spirit get down now. Y'all should still be happy because you know what? You have an opportunity to give. You 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 have it to give. That's a reason to give God glory and give God praise. So we have many ways which you can give here at St. Mark. If you'll look at your pew, we have QR codes. Now listen, the young people probably can help us more than the, the senior people. Um, uh, they have QR codes, and so you can give through Cash App, you can give through Givelify, you can give through PayPal, you can give through uh, Zelle, you can sell it. Uh, if you want to sell it, you can sell to Paul, Rev Paul, at Se No, I'm not, I'm, listen, it ain't coming to me, it just goes to the bank account, the church's account. Look, and y'all, like, he wanted to sell it to him. Lord, y'all, y'all ain't know y'all. Y'all been in church too long. It ain't coming to me. It ain't coming to me. It's just a bank account is tied to that particular email account. So if you would like to sell it to St. Mark, you just sell it to Rev. Paul at stmarkame.org. It will go directly into our business account. Or if you want to go at Old Fashioned and write a check, you just make it out to St. Mark AME Church. Or if you want to put cash, I didn't say change, cash, you're, you're, you're free to do that. You're, you're free to put cash in the envelope. But give because God has been good to you. Now, are you going to go forward? Are they, how are we going to do this? We're going to go to the, are they going to have a march around? What do you want them to do? They're looking at me. They gonna, you want to have a march around? Well, then y'all got to get up front. Come on up front up here. You, they're going to have you march around. Because we know you, you, we need, you need y'all to get exercise. Now, listen. We, we, we need you to bless us so we can bless others. And I'm serious about that. Uh, so give because God has been good to you. I can put a number on it, uh, but, but I'm not going to put it. I'm not going to say everybody bring 5,000 because, uh, listen, right, I, ain't, right. I ain't looking. Y'all looking at me like, you a fool. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes, some point in time, it's going to happen. But, uh, but give the very best that you can and, and, and watch what God will do. So uh, we're going to have some giving music, right? Some music to make people get up and shake and, 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 and.
and shake that them them dollars out of him. Yeah, yeah. We gonna, so come on now. Give because God has been good to you. Come on now. If you want and you gave online, just take your phone when you walk around and just tap the envelope. Come on. but could not. Now use it for kingdom building. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says amen. 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 Woo. I'm excited. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'd like to introduce the next two preachers. Uh, the next preacher is the Reverend Dr. Terry L. Richardson. He received his undergraduate degree from Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His Master of Divinity and Doctor of Ministry degree with a focus on urban ministry from the New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Brunswick. He holds a, a, a leadership certification from Wheaton College Billy Graham African American Evangelism Program and the Sam Chan Institute of Leadership. From 1997 to present, Dr. Richardson has served as a senior pastor at the First Baptist Church of South Orange in South Orange, New Jersey. He is an adjunct professor at Essex County Community College, excuse me, Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey, teaching comparative world religion and having taught introduction to sociology, social problems, and world religion from 2009 to present. He sits on numerous community boards and works collaboratively with faith-based and state governing bodies, including a Homeland Security Essex County prosecutor, 
Sheriff's Office and the Isaiah House Shelter for Families in East Orange, New Jersey. He serves as police cap chaplain in South Orange, New Jersey, police chaplain in Maplewood, New Jersey, and has served as hosp hospital chaplain with, with the University of Medicine and Dentistry in Newark, New Jersey. He has many achievements. He is a 2018 Amazon best-selling author for his work in anthology under the category of Christian faith and Christian prayer. Dr. Richardson created the Knowledge is Power Supplemental Education Learning Center and has been honored by the New Jersey State General Assembly for distinction in community. He has been named Villager of the Month by the South Orange Township. Dr. Richardson and his church were named Church of the Week by the Christian Talk Radio for outstanding community work. Dr. Richardson received the Martin Luther King Beloved Community Award by the South Orange Civic Association. He's been honored by the National Sorority of Phi Delta Kappa Incorporated Delta Pi Chapter with a Citation Award. And he's a recipient of the above self-award Rotary Club Award of the Essex County Prosecutor Office Community Award for Outstanding Community Leadership and a Community Award by the Oranges and Maplewood NAACP Chapter. Dr. Richardson, he lend his voice at various tables to address social, political, and economic ills faced by residents with the intent of helping to improve the human condition and bring about community wholeness. He prides himself on the many issues he has helped faith-based nonprofits and community organizations. He is the proud husband of 34 years. Amen. <laughs> to the former Nadine Bridgeforth, they have four children, Shannon, Devin, Kayla, and Jeremiah, and three grandchildren, Lathan, Lark, and Aria. Uh, did I pronounce that correctly? And uh, um, I have been blessed to work with him as we uh, he, he allowed St. Mark to join with First Baptist Church of South Orange to do a men's Bible study. I have been blessed so much by his presence, his knowledge, and his transparency. He is a true man of God. They are doing great things in South Orange. Amen? Amen. And so he will be bringing the fourth word. And then you will hear from the former pastor of St. Mark AME Church, the Reverend Vernon H. Peters. Amen. Yeah, come on, you can do better than that. has been appointed pastor of Allen Memorial AME Church in Brooklyn, New York. Prior to pastoring Allen Memorial, he founded Covenant AME Church in Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania, and Union Chapel AME Church in Warwick, New York. Uh, he took the congregation from 53 members and moved the 100-year-old historic church into, the, into an African-American museum, and he completed construction of a new church edifice in a two-bedroom parsonage totaling a million dollars. He knows how to take care of business, yes. Uh, he proudly serves as the Brooklyn Westchester District of the New York Annual Conference as a member of the Board of Trustees, the Board of Finance, the Ministerial Alliance, and the Board of Examiners. He graduated from Lehman College with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and Management in Drew University. He earned a Master of Divinity degree with honors with a concentration in Bible studies from Drew. Reverend, Martin, Reverend Peters was employed as a nurse manager in the development of nursing at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, where he worked for 24 years and has shifted ministry from helping to save lives to saving souls. He is a spiritual leader, pastor, teacher, administrator. He's known for his humbleness, an exceptional gift of bringing congregants together in unity throughout the ministry and working for the glory of God. He has a passion to serve and a vision instilled by God. Uh, he encouraged the church family to do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Brother Peters, Reverend Peters, Pastor Peters is the husband of Miss Cheryl Brown Peters. 
I would know she was here if she was, because her hat would take about three pews in the church. And she is a great, beautiful woman of God. They make a terrific couple. He is married to Miss Cheryl Brown Peters, and they have one daughter, Brittany A. Peters, uh, the Connectional NGO chairperson of the Women's Missionary Society. Uh, Reverend Peters, I have known for a number, number, number of years. I don't know how it happened, but he was, he may have been pastoring here when I was going through the Ministerial Institute. Uh, since that time, we have uh, become uh, uh, more than colleagues. He always gives a encouraging word despite the circumstances and the conditions that we're facing. When I see his number come up, I pick up the phone. I don't care where, because I know he is always going to give a word that will lift me up and not tear me down. And I know this is, I'm not, it's not just me. He does that in all his relationships. So after the next selection, you will hear from the Reverend Dr. Ter Terry Richardson, and then you will hear from uh, Reverend Vernon H. Peters. For your mercies never fail me All my life You have held me in your hands From the moment that I wake up Before I lay my head down Oh, I will sing Of the goodness I love you, Lord. You have held me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as my friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have.
grace and mercy says, run and run and run and run and run and up to me, Lord. Oh, your goodness is running out to me. Running after me, oh Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord, that keeps running after me. If you know his goodness has been running after you, go ahead and give him some praise. No, if you know his goodness is running after you, because you're running in an opposite direction. Come on, tell somebody God's been good, and he's been running after me. Now, if you allow him to catch up with you, come on, somebody. And he has touched you with his finger of love and woke you up this morning. Go ahead and high five two or three people. Tell them his love is running after me. Tell them I'm not a boy. It is power unto salvation to all who believe. Tell somebody, and I believe. Hallelujah. We bless his name. We bless his name. We bless his name. I am delighted to be with you. Uh, we give God praise, honor, and glory. We honor the angel of this house, this great man of God. Amen. Pastor Martin, I've had the pleasure of getting to know over the course of the months that we've spent online. This is actually my very first time meeting him in person. You know, in, in a post-COVID world, people get stuck to that online stuff. But I do, I promise you, I know where he is every Saturday. If he is not on the golf course, then he is online. Amen. And we give God praise, honor, and glory. I want to say, again, thank you to all these distinguished men and women of God who grace the pulpit. I want to say bless you, thank you. Uh, you need to convince somebody else that your title is not minister because you have not convinced me today. We thank God for you and each and every one of you. All right. I was assigned the second word, but found out today when I got here, it's the fourth word. So we give God praise, honor, and glory. Turn your Bibles to Mark, the 15th chapter. The fourth utterance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, verses 33 and 34. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Out of the New King James Version. Now, when the sixth hour had come, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A broken king. A broken king. Father in Christ, our Lord, we bless you and we honor you. We thank you. And we can come together to remember and to celebrate your goodness on this Good Friday. Have your way in this fourth utterance. In Christ we pray. Amen. Imagine being suspended on a cross for hours in pain. Imagine the hot, blistering sun over your head. No shade, no water. Imagine trying to focus your mind in order to control your thoughts, to fight to keep from passing out. Imagine biting insects blinding sun, excruciating pain. 
Imagine the people you once blessed spitting at you, <laughs> mocking you. Imagine your greatest hour of need and having no one to cover you or come to your rescue, not even God. This Friday, this is the cross of King Jesus. I thank God for those times I called on him and he heard my cry. Come on, somebody. You need to thank him for every time you were in need. And you bent your knee to the ground and stretched your hands to heaven that God showed up and stood between you and the evil that wanted to overcome you. As a matter of fact, let's take time right now and just simply give God some thanks. Give him some praise. Say thank you, Jesus, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, Jesus, for being there when the hell hounds are on my... Oh, don't be proud about it. Come on, you... You don't got to be bougie about it. I know there are some AKAs and some Alpha and some Deltas in here, but you don't got to be bougie about it. Thank God for every time you had your head, head low and you stretched your hands to heaven and he showed up. Somebody say, God is a good God. But on this day, on Good Friday, we had a broken king hanging on the cross. A grim hour, but we must understand some things, and I'll sit down since I was assigned the second word. <laughs> we must understand that in spite of the grimness of this hour, there are times when God takes us, blesses us, breaks us, and gives us to the world. Because God cannot give you to the world. He cannot gift you to someone else until you first allow him to take you, bless you, allow life to break you, so he can send you. Are you with me, somebody? The more God takes you, the more he blesses you, the more he breaks you, the more he multiplies you so that you can meet certain needs that you could not have met unless he encountered you. Because multiplication, multiplication in our lives is based on being broke, not being blessed. Let me say that one again. <laughs> all of us are asking God for more, and asking, all of us are asking God for bless, to bless us. But God can't bless us without first, come on somebody, breaking us. Multiplication is not in the blessing. Multiplication is in the breaking. I hope the Holy Spirit is talking to somebody, because pastor only gave, he gave you six, he gave me three minutes, so I'm almost done. Are you with me, somebody? There are times when God must break us in order to bless us, in order to send us. When was the last time you asked God to break you? I know you've been asking him to bless you, but when was the last time your prayer included God Break me. The text says, and at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Sit, 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 sit. Y'all going to have me preaching. I want to teach this. <laughs> Eloi, Eloi. Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? which really should be translated a little differently. Mm, because Jesus is using it a little differently here than he is quoting from what from the scripture he is quoting from, which is the 22nd Psalm. 
the 22nd Psalm uses it from the perspective of a Jewish audience that points to this messianic psalm that points to, uh, to David who points to Jesus. But Jesus doesn't want to confuse how he is using it um, and, and, and to make sure that the Hebrew understand he's using it differently here. He also wants to distinguish how it's being used in the Greek. Because Matthew also quotes this text in Matthew 27. So Jesus is not speaking this from a Hebrew perspective, nor a Greek perspective. Jesus is using Aramaic to make sure that he is not confused with David, nor is he confused with, the, with Greeks. Jesus is not saying Eloi, Eloi. Uh, uh, he's not saying Eli, Eli, which is what uh, uh, Matthew uses and what, and what the Hebrews use. It's not Eli, Eli. He says E, Oli, E, Oli. Matthew uses um, Lime, Lime. Jesus uses Lama Stabachtani. In other words, he is not saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because the reality is, is that it's God hanging on the cross and God cannot forsake God. He's Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And God cannot separate himself. God cannot forsake himself. So it's not why have you forsaken me. It's my God, my God. Why have you allowed this? I just want to teach it. Sister, sister, sister. Why? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't the master forsaking him. Uh, the pilot forsook him. The crowd forsook him. The disciples forsook him. The prisoners forsook him. The religious leaders forsook him. The father did not forsake him, but he, Jesus wants to know, wants to know, because I'm different. The father is not going to forsake me, but, but I want to know why have you allowed this to happen? And the question that God has for you in this fourth word, have you ever found yourself in a desperate situation with separation anxiety where you didn't feel the presence of God and you wanted to know, God, why am I going through this? Why me? Why now? Why can't it be somebody else? Why here have you allowed me after you've brought me so far along the way? Why me? Why my bills? Why my health? Why my marriage? Why my ministry? Why my business? Why me? Why, my God, my God, have you allowed this? God says, to break your flesh. I don't know if I'm getting close to the three minutes you gave me, Pastor. Because if I can't break your flesh, I can't give them you. God must break us before he positions us. God says, I know you're experiencing separation anxiety, and I realized I didn't answer you the last three times you prayed to me in the Garden of Gethsemane, but I can't let you go from this. I can't allow you to get out of this because I picked you. I knew you before you were born and formed in your mother's womb, and I called you to go through what you are going through but why, God? Why? In this moment. Oh, I feel it. I feel the pastor. Get ready. He's getting ready to pull my coattail. He only gave me three minutes. He only gave me three minutes. Because, Jesus, humility grows out of moments of stress and strain. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, humility grows out of moments of stress and strain. Because you see this, you see this, see this church, when you ask God, where are you, God, it makes you pray harder. 
When you ask God, why me, God, it, it sends you on your knees seeking him more. When you ask God, God, are you sure I should be going through this? It makes you ask for more grace to show up in your life. Beware of Christians who always have it going on. It's a sure telltale sign that you're dealing with a fraud. Matter of fact, look on your row and see if anybody looked like a fraud. Because you see, I'm, I'm going to take my seat. The, because the world needs, the world, the needs that the world has is too complicated for me to try to begin to solve only with my degree. The world needs and the needs of those who are sitting in the pew and my brothers and my sisters, their needs are so complicated that my skills won't get it done. Are you with me, somebody? It requires a divine intervention, and you have to have somebody that have heard from the Lord and not from themselves. It doesn't matter if you're feeling weak. It doesn't matter if you're feeling like you're at your last, last rope. It doesn't matter because in, his, in my weakness, he proves himself strong and mighty. Mm. In my weakness, his strength is validated in my life. Let me say it one more time and I'll take a seat. In my weakness, his strength is validated in my life. So he chooses frail, fractured, broken. People who have limits so that they will not get confused where the ointment comes from. <laughs> he, says, he says, Jesus, you, you, you are the tabernacle on this cross. You are the lamb that must be slain for the remissions of the sins of the world. And, and I don't want them to get confused. I know you're not confused, but you are the first fruit of, of many to come and I don't want them confused the glory is not for them the glory of your suffering is for me and what we need to understand is is that even in my suffering hallelujah when he blesses me it's him coming out of me it's not my skill that gets me over it's it's not my talent that gets me over come on somebody it's God taking a broken cistern, amen, so that the cistern gets no glory, but that he gets all the glory. So when God decides to plant you in a place that's challenging and difficult, ain't no need to argue. As a matter of fact, tap somebody and say, stop arguing, it ain't going to work. <laughs> Come on, pastors, tell us it ain't going to work. Because God says, I will not let you go, Jesus, until I move you to a place that I have for you. Come on, somebody. And that not only repaired for you, I prepared you for the place. So that they and you will begin to grow. And when your branches grow, because remember, you're the vine. When Jesus says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, he is showing us and teaching us. He knows that God didn't forsake him. He just wants to know why God. Are you with me? And he shows us God's grace and what to do in moments of brokenness. A king broken teaches us how to call on his father. My God, my God, is not a plea of desperation. It's a prayer of hope. No one else I can call on. My God, my God, is the way Jesus begins his prayer of faith. I don't know how it happened. I don't know why it happened. But I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. In your brokenness, he is still king. God bless you.
Come on, somebody. Come on, let's stand. Stand for a moment. Just stand in your feet for a moment. You know, as a nurse, when I used to be a nurse, you know, the one thing they always tell us, you never keep sitting all the time. You, every now and then, you got to stand up. So just stand up. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, be I here for a reason today. Be I here for a purpose on today. Because we know that our God is a good God. Now just turn around, give some, give a high five to somebody and take your seat. You may be seated. To this man of God and the shepherd of this house, and of course his lovely wife, and to all of these distinguished pastors, preachers, teachers, we want to thank Dr. Richardson for the teaching of the word. The word of God is true. It did say God calls some to teach, to preach, to evangelize. So we all have very different gifts that God has blessed us. So thank you for teaching on the word on today. I just want to say quickly before I get to my assignment, and my assignment was the fourth word, was the fifth word. I'm not going to tell you the rest, but my assignment is the fifth word. And because it's the fifth word, and the fifth word is, I thirst. So I'm going to preach on the fifth word, I thirst. But before I get to the scripture, I just want to say to this great church, the members of this church, St. Mark Church, with whom I had the pleasure of serving for three years, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because you all have blessed me tremendously in my ministry. Even though now I'm home to my home church pastoring, but there's nothing like the home of St. Mark AME Church in East Orange. And I want to say thank you. I still have some family here, the Dublins, who are here, and I just want to say thank you all again. To all of you, my brothers and my sisters, we are here with this Good Friday service. And we know that God has truly have been blessing us in many ways. Coming from the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter, reading from verses 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. God's word for God's people, which is already blessed. Gracious and heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. God, hide your servant behind these desks. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the redeemer of the Lord say amen. amen. I thirst. What was it like to watch Jesus slow and agonizing dead on the cross? Perhaps it had impressed the soldier with Peter's word. Jesus committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly in 1 Peter. You see, Peter concludes this passage with words from the prophet, echoing the words of the suffering servant passage of Isaiah 53, that the soldier did not yet know. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. You see, Jesus' only cry of physical pain the other cries dealt with the care for others 
our prayer to God the Father. His cry, I thirst, uh, proved that Jesus was made uh, like unto us. Uh, the word became flesh and dwell among us. Uh, this saying, I thirst, uh, tells us that Jesus suffering as a human being. Uh, Jesus suffered thirst uh, in a real body. Uh, Christ died for our sins, uh, according to the scripture. Uh, you see, the stress uh, of his coming passion uh, had him sweating blood in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus was arrested, beaten, mocked, flogged, uh, and then crucified. Uh, you see, crucifixion itself uh, was a long, slow death by blood loss. Uh, the pain was unbearable. Uh, but the only complaint we hear from Christ uh, through the whole ordeal uh, was, I thirst. Uh, I know uh, that these words uh, tell us about Christ's suffering uh, and his identification with us uh, in our humanity. Uh, but all uh, of all the suffering that he felt, uh, Jesus was thirsty. Uh, hours of blood, uh, blood loss, uh, will certainly cause one to be thirsty. But there are two more points uh, for us to consider today. Uh, these words come uh, to us in the John's Gospel, uh, where Jesus' first sign was, uh, he turned water to wine. Uh, and when Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman at the well, uh, he said, uh, you do not know the gift of God, uh, or who is asking you uh, for a drink of this water? Uh, because if you do, uh, you would have asked him uh, for something greater. Uh, and he would have given you uh, living water. Uh, I thirst uh, to the crowds uh, clanging for a sign. Uh, Jesus said, uh, I am the bread uh, that gives life. Uh, if you come to my table, uh, you will never uh, go hungry. Uh, believe in me, uh, and you will never uh, be thirsty. Uh, and to the people in Jerusalem, uh, he said, uh, if any of you uh, is thirsty, uh, come to me uh, and drink. Uh, if you believe in me, uh, the scripture says uh, that rivers uh, of living water uh, will be flowing uh, from within you. Uh, I thirst. Uh, Jesus promised uh, to take away uh, all the thirst uh, of all who come to him uh, to sacrifice, uh, to satisfy them uh, and give them uh, living water. Uh, have uh, living water uh, failed our Savior? Uh, the answer is no, uh, because God the Father uh, had not let the cup uh, pass from Jesus, uh, and he drank it full. Uh, but his thirst uh, was still uh, not quenched. Uh, it was when uh, he knew the work uh, was accomplished. Uh, then he said, uh, I thirst. Uh, he had suffered. Uh, what needed suffering? Uh, he was moments away uh, from death. Uh, and he knew uh, what the scripture said. Uh, the hope uh, of Israel uh, had to be uh, fulfilled. Uh, and so he expressed uh, his thirst. Uh, the book of Psalm uh, 69 uh, and 21 says, uh, They give me vinegar. Uh, for my thirst, uh, vinegar uh, is a little help, uh, but it's not uh, a thirst quencher. Uh, when you consider uh, what Christ's thirst uh, was more uh, than the physical uh, discomfort uh, of a dying man. Uh, in other words, uh, Jesus knew uh, that the work was done uh, and was thirsty. Uh, for the fruits uh, of his labor, uh, his thirst uh, for you uh, and for me. Uh, find our life uh, and our substance uh, in God. Uh, the work 
of the sun, the thirst of the sun through the spirit is nothing less than the Father's thirst for you and for me. In other words, God desires to desire God and so behold the crucified one longs and thirsts for us to find our way home. Too many of us have gone astray. So Jesus is saying towards the end of his hour on the cross, he realized that everything that he came to do was finished. And so he said, I thirst. This word indicates that while Jesus was dying on the cross, he was yet still working, working out your salvation, working out so that you wouldn't be thirsty. His death was different from that of any other person uh, through his death uh, our Savior uh, did great work uh, but while uh, this work uh, was taking place uh, he did not drink uh, anything uh, usually uh, one who is working faithfully uh, will not drink uh, until the work is done uh, when you are working uh, Desperately, <laughs> preacher, uh, on a life-changing situation, uh, we don't have time to say, uh, I thirst uh, and I would like a drink. Uh, would you please, sir, uh, serve me a drink? Uh, Jesus indicates uh, his thirst uh, and need for a drink uh, because he knew uh, that all things uh, had now uh, been accomplished. Uh, that's why uh, this message uh, from the cross uh, is so meaningful to us. Uh, even over uh, 2,000 years later, uh, there is no uh, condemnation. Uh, there is no uh, judgment. Uh, there is no uh, shaking of the head. Uh, even though uh, Jesus knew uh, he would fail uh, at this uh, over and over again. Uh, in the beauty uh, of his last moment uh, and out uh, of the depths uh, of his own physical suffering. Uh, when all uh, his work uh, on earth uh, was done, uh, there comes one uh, simple plea. Uh, from the cross, uh, I thirst, uh, and it comes to us uh, today uh, from the least of these, uh, from that mother uh, who had to provide uh, for her family uh, on welfare uh, until God uh, made a way uh, from the victim uh, of abuse, uh, from those uh, that are oppressed. Uh, from those uh, that are disabled, uh, from the victims uh, of war uh, and famine uh, and poverty. Uh, Jesus is saying, uh, don't forget uh, all those uh, that I have uh, created uh, all around you. Uh, all those uh, are part uh, of your family uh, from the mouth uh, of the man uh, who spent his life uh, and his ministry uh, as a servant uh, comes one uh, final plea uh, for us uh, to love uh, one another. Uh, don't forget uh, there are people out there uh, who need your time, uh, who need your skills, uh, who need your friendship. Uh, who need your listening ear? Uh, who need your presence? Uh, 
and most of all, uh, your love. Uh, those of you uh, who hunger uh, and thirst uh, for righteousness, uh, yourselves uh, reach out uh, and say to someone, uh, I thirst, uh, I thirst, uh, I thirst uh, for God. Uh, the word passion uh, means suffering. Uh, no place uh, in scripture uh, do we find suffering of Christ uh, more pronounced uh, than in the seven uh, last words uh, of Jesus uh, on the cross. Uh, this fifth word uh, from the cross uh, brings us uh, to a place uh, called Calvary. Uh, the place uh, where we come uh, with our sins uh, and we see uh, the Savior uh, righteousness. Uh, the place uh, where we come uh, with our bitterness uh, and we see uh, a Savior uh, sweetness. Uh, the place uh, where we come uh, with our despair uh, and we see uh, a savior the uh, blessed assurance uh, the place uh, where we come uh, with our doubts uh, and we see uh, a savior the uh, life uh, the place uh, where we come uh, to calvary uh, with our lack uh, of hope and receive a Savior's life everlasting. The place called Calvary, the fifth word, saying of Jesus, we see the human nature of Jesus expressed in these words. I thirst, I thirst, I don't know about you, uh, but look around uh, and see the world uh, that we're living in. Uh, there's so many folks uh, that are thirsty uh, for something. Uh, but on this uh, Good Friday, uh, you ought to be uh, thirsting uh, for none other uh, than Jesus. Uh, Jesus, uh, the one uh, who came to make uh, a sacrifice uh, not for himself uh, not for some uh, but for you uh, and for me uh, so I don't know uh, what's your plan uh, for the rest uh, of your life uh, but I'll stop by uh, to remind you uh, about the goodness uh, of Jesus uh, and what He's done for you. That's why he was on the cross and was able to say, I, I, I thirst. Sometimes we don't always understand who God really is. But my brothers and my sisters, there's a reason why every year that we are blessed to live through this season that we come to be a part of this Good Friday worship service. And I must tell you today, I'm so glad, Dr. Martin, that you have put this together. Because the word that was preached earlier truly blessed my soul. Truly blessed my soul. And I trust and hope that the rest of the day you'll be thirsting not for anything else but for righteousness. Amen. Amen. Are you having a good time? Are you enjoying the word? Should we do it again next year? 
I'm going to give everybody the wrong word next year. I'm going I'm to give every single preacher the wrong word. Because they, they preaching a word and they tell me how you answer what you gave me. Well, that's what the Lord told you to preach. So I'm giving everybody the wrong word next year. Everybody but me. I'm going to have the right word. I, I ain't going to make a fool out of me. I'm going to... I'm going to make sure I got the right word. Y'all may not have the one. Uh, we have two more preachers. I, I promised the congregation I would not have the service last as long as Jesus was on the cross. So we're going to get y'all out of here. We got two more words. Uh, the next preacher that you will hear is the executive minister here at St. Mark. The Reverend, yes, you can give her, amen. Uh, Reverend Teresa Rushdan, she graduated from honors from the College of New Rochelle in New York, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in letters with emphasis on religious studies uh, and a minor in African American studies. Soon after, Reverend Rushdan attended Drew Theological Seminary in Madison, New Jersey, where she graduated and received a Master of Divinity with an emphasis in pastoral theology. She's an itinerant elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. She has served in, in a ministerial capacity at St. James AME Church in Newark, where she was the, mas uh, the minister of pastoral care. And in 2001, uh, the Lord called Reverend Rushdan to become the pastor of Bethel AME Church in Madison, New Jersey, where she served for 18 years. 18 years. 18 years pastoring y'all, Pete. 18 years pastoring people that look like us. 18 years. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? One of Reverend Rushdan's favorite scriptures is the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and opening of the prisons to those who are bound. I came from Isaiah 61. Music and theater are her passion. She's a worshiper a psalmist. She belongs to several gospel choirs and is a former member of the New Jersey State Opera Company. Reverend Rushdan strongly believes that God is a liberator, a redeemer, and an emancipator. She believes that personal weaknesses and struggles and conditions are more, more, are more of a platform for God to build upon. She believes that all human beings have been created by God and therefore are uniquely blessed by God with gifts from God, which God can use for God's purpose. Um, several months ago, I was sitting in my uh, family room, drinking water out of a red cup. phone rang uh -huh. and I uh, looked and it was Reverend Rushdan and I said uh, I picked it up I said Reverend Rush how you doing she said I'm fine you need help I said yeah I know I'm seeing a therapist she said no no not that type of not that type of help uh, uh, you need help at the church uh, can I come and work with you Those here at St. Mark may not remember. Uh, four years ago, during the midst of COVID, no one was in the church. Uh, I preached to a teddy bear that I sat up in the back of the church. And I told the first lady, the moment that teddy bear, get, teddy bear gets up, My days of preaching are over, and I ain't never going back. If 
But I also told the congregation that there will be a time. God put, and this is true. God put this in my spirit. That there will be an executive minister at this church. Because I can't do everything. That there will be a time when there will be musicians. And there will be a psalmist. There will be a time when we will have preachers circled around this pulpit. God has never lied to me yet. And God allowed Sister Rustin to come and bring her spiritual guidance and direction to bless this church. Don't tell me that there's not a God that sits high and looks low. So we, we, we're going to hear from Reverend Rushdan. I don't feel like preaching anymore. I, got, I, got I want to hear from y'all. And then, and, then, and then you're also going to hear the seventh word. I did give you the seventh word, didn't I? <laughs> Reverend Dr. Marty Robertson. Doc, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey. He, bring, he, he brought his own crew. Yeah, I like that. Hey, man. Hey, man. I need to bottle that up. Dr. Robinson serves as a pastor of Ebenezer AME Church in Rawway, New Jersey. He's a graduate of Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology and English. He earned a Juris Doctorate degree from Seton Hall University School of Law in Newark, New Jersey. In 2010, he earned a Master of Divinity degree from New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Brunswick, New Jersey. He also became the seminary's first student in its 229-year history to be elected to the Board of Trustees. Amen. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Robertson is the former pastor of Bethel AME Church in Passaic, New Jersey, where he grew the church numerically, financially, emotionally, mentally, socially, and also spiritually. He has served numerous, he has received numerous honors and awards for his outstanding service to the church and the community, such as in 2011, Spirituality Award from the I Can Foundation, where he was recognized for his commitment to spirituality and empowering the youth to new levels of success. He was the awarded Teacher of the Year at the 2012 First Episcopal District Church School Seminar, which took place in Tupper. Uh, Tabor AME Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And in 2013, Dr. Marty Robertson received the Man of the Year Award from the Edison Job Corp in Edison, New Jersey. In January 2020, Dr. Robertson was the guest speaker at Kane University's annual tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for its Office of Africana Stu Studies Department. The title of his speech was Spare Change, Chump Change, or Real Change. He's a member of the NAACP Rawway branch where he serves as the executive committee as its chairman of religious affairs. He serves as community relations board at the Kavanta Union Inc. in Rawway, New Jersey. He's appointed by the Rawway mayor to serve as the chairman of the city of Rawway's social justice commission. He's a recipient of the 2021 New Jersey State Governor's Jefferson Award in education category and the most recently received the 2023 NAACP Freedom Fund Community Service Award. He enjoys all type of music and he likes hanging out at Barnes and Noble, meaning you gotta talk, we gotta talk, we gotta, cause we got better places we can hang out than Barnes and Noble. Oh, here's why, here's why, cause he enjoys drinking coffee. You can't do that out of red cups. He enjoys drinking coffee from Starbucks, meeting wise people, and spending lots of time with his partner in life, his lovely wife, Chantel Brown Robinson. Amen. Um, for years, um, if you if you see me at these AME um, meetings, in fact, we have annual conference coming up next week, and if you see me. Um, I usually am in a corner on my computer. I really am not, I'm not, I'm not the AME person, you know. 
And so I'm usually in the corner on my computer and um, um, because I'm, I'm working, you know, I'm about vocational. I got to work. I got, I got five kids. I got to work. And so I'm working and, and um, there are certain people that um, um, I want to get to know. I want to meet who impress me, who aren't one of these brown nose cow towing, trying to get up by stepping on people. There's people that stand with integrity. Dr. Marty Robinson Esquire is that person. And so when I was praying, because me and you really never had no deep conversation. We're going to talk about that Starbucks thing next time, but 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 I said when I was praying, I said, oh, God, who who should be? Dr. Marty Robinson. Get that brother and let him preach. So it is my honor and my my distinguished honor to present this psalm and introduce the others after the next selection. Uh, you will hear from above from the executive minister, Reverend Teresa Rushdan, after which you will hear from uh, Reverend Dr. Marty Robbins, Roberts, Robinson Esquire. God be the glory. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name jesus that's why my heart is filled with praise y'all let me sing that one more time y'all i love you i love you you Lord today because you care for me in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name why 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 because my heart is filled with praise, that's why Jesus, because my heart is filled with praise, last time y'all, because my heart is filled with praise, hallelujah God, hallelujah, so much praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give God another hand praise. For truly the Lord is worthy to be praised. I've heard it said from the rising of the sun to the setting down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. Come on, give God a great big praise. I've heard a few people start their words and their messages with a very familiar statement that is often said these days. I came on assignment to speak a word of encouragement to the family of God, to the body of Christ, and we the inheritors of his bountiful estate. Say that. At this juncture, the story of the cross has taken a dramatic turn. The atmosphere has shifted, and what was about to happen would change humanity forever. It's Friday, folk, April the 3rd. It's the darkest day in human history. Back in Rome, Tiberius attends to the demanding business 
of his empire. And throughout the inhabited world, babies are being born, people still eat and drink, barter in marketplaces, some sailing merchant ships, others fighting battles, and children would play and people would die. But today, one death, one brutal, gruesome death, the worst and best of all human deaths would change the world because on this day, God the Son, God in flesh, the creator of all, will be executed. I'm going to preach for just a few moments, and the title of the word that God gave me is that part. The streets were filled with onlookers jeering at Jesus mocking him, barely able to walk under the weight of carrying his own cross down the Villa de la Rosa. A man named Simon of Cyrene, a black man, by the way, helped Jesus carry the cross to Golgotha, also known as the place of the skull. And Jesus is then nailed to the cross, hoisted and positioned between two thieves. And Jesus becomes his own narrator as he speaks from the cross the first five words. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is my God, my God. Why have you done this? I was listening up in here. And now the sixth word, as recorded in the book of John, chapter 19, 13, 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said it is finished, and he bowed his head. Jesus, who lived an abundantly perfect life of self-sacrifice and obedience, Jesus who has been despised and rejected by others. Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, whose enemies had been many and his friends have been few. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He was handed over, because everybody grinning at you ain't your friend. He was handed over to those who hate him. He was arrested while in the act of prayer. He is betrayed by one of his own disciples. He is arraigned before secular courts, beaten beyond recognition, robed in mockery and then unrobed in shame. He is declared innocent and yet is delivered up by the judge who ought to have preserved him from his persecutors. He's been dragged through the streets of Jerusalem, streets that would now be stained with the blood of a master. He was made to carry his own cross down the Villa de la Rosa, also known as a path of sorrow. Crowds roared, children played, mothers cried, and everybody was on the street watching Jesus go to the cross. Somebody come on with me. He was assisted in carrying that cross. Some watched, and Jesus was laid upon that cross, nailed at the ankles with sharp stakes, and hands nailed with those same or different sharp stakes, hoisted for all to see, searing pain ripping through his body. Nurse, you know what he was going through. <laughs> the pain of a crown of thorns crushed his skull, Blood streaming down his face. Body beginning to dislocate from the stress and the strain of his own physical weight. Beloved church, God in flesh is on the cross. Church, God in flesh is suffocating and barely able to breathe. I like what Intazaki Shange said in the for color girls who considered suicide when the rainbow was enough. She said, and there was nowhere. Yeah. Woo! I feel good today. This afternoon, we go back to that place, the place where the plan of ages was put into action, the place where the greatest battle of all, of all time was fought, and it was flooded with God's tears. Just thinking about the price 
that would be paid there, his own self on the cross, his own baby boy hanging for a generation of degenerates just, just so they could be set free even though his son would be dead. We're no longer seated in the comfort of St. Mark, seated on padded pews. We're in the theater of the gospel that Jesus lived. But we are in a place also called Golgotha, the place of the skull, the place of pain, the place of horror, the place of sentencing, the place of payment, the place of power, where God would demonstrate his power that no mortal man could do. It also became the place of promise. I said, it'd be, I got to get one of those tablets. Amen. Jesus has already spoken five thoughts, five sentences, no matter how small, five phrases depicting where he was emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. And after five specific moments being suspended between two thieves, a weary Jesus asked God, Father, Forgive them. But Sidney worked that out. For they know not what they do. Sidney Williams said, no, they knew what they was doing. <laughs> and to offer them eternal paradise, even though they be unworthy. Jesus entrusts his mother also into the care of John, like any good son would. Uh, Jesus then admits that after hours of hanging on the cross under the heat of the sun, he cannot die until all words had been spoken. He asked for something to drink, something to wet his lips for his final effort. He has to keep on going. The word said he had to fulfill scripture so he can't give up now. <laughs> Jesus is thirsty and a frozen coke just won't do. He says, I thirst. Spoken with barely a whisper, I'm thirsty. Spoken through cracked, parched lips and a dry tongue, as Ferris say. And instead of being given the comfort of a cool sip of water, he is given gall, a vinegar mixture that doesn't quench thirst but increases the thirst. Jesus was thirsting for living water. The beaten, pierced, and dying man on the cross was thirsty and wanted some water, but God on the cross, I said God on the cross, bearing the sins of the world on his shoulders was thirsting for another type of relief. Bearing all the sins of the world is now, is now an excruciating pain in his body. Jesus was hungering and thirsting, not necessarily for water, but for the righteousness that would reunite him with his father and the kingdom of heaven. He says under the strain of excruciating pain, the one who came, became living water for us, the one with the patience of Job, the one who has the self-reliance of Nehemiah, the one who had the statesmanship of Joshua, the one with the wisdom of Solomon, Jesus said, it's finished. Enough. It's near the end of my human life. He senses it. He's hung on the cross for nearly six hours now, Reverend. It has become hard for Jesus to even catch his breath. Hung from his arms. He must pull himself up each time he wants to breathe. Shoulders aching, mouth parched. He is experiencing ultimate exhaustion. Jesus said it's Church, what is finished really? It means to bring to an end, to complete, to accomplish. It's a crucial word because it signifies the successful end to a particular course of action. It's like a husband or a wife that says to the other spouse, it's finished. No need to try any harder. No need to try to make it work. You don't love me and I don't love you. It's over. It's over, Dover. Finished is the scourge and the ridicule. Finished 
is the hurt of the rejection coming from those Jesus loved. Finished is the agony of earthly concerns as Jesus makes provision for his mother. Finished is the heat, hallelujah, of the hot burning skin or sun on his skin on the cross is finished. And the announcement of obedience is fulfilled. It's finished. Natural hunger and thirst have ended. It's finished. Was the judgment and punishment of sin necessary for our redemption? It is finished. Because the perfect and most holy sacrifice has been offered. And when Jesus uttered the words, it is finished on the cross, he was declaring that his work of salvation was complete. Jesus meant that through his sacrifice, he had completely, abundantly, over the top, fulfill God's redemptive plan by securing our own justification, bearing our sins, undergoing God's wrath, tearing the temple veil, ending the sacrificial system, defeating Satan, ransoming humanity, inaugurating a brand new covenant, reconciling humanity to God, humanity to God, exemplifying perfect obedience, conquering death itself and supremely glorifying the father it is finished church weathered he jesus weathered every storm yes it's finished jesus won the battle yes it's finished and he now has the victory yes it's finished the heartache that part the struggle that part, the addiction, that part, the pain, that part, mercy and truth met together, righteousness and peace kissed each other, yes it's finished, but I want you to know it ain't over because God is still working it out for our good, how do I know Reverend Rushton, how do you know, like you, when you gave up, God never gave up on you. When you gave up, folk talked about you, and it was God who wiped your tears. Like you, when you got tired, it was God who stood you back up. When they left you, it was God. It was God who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And it ain't over because God is still healing the community of faith today. God is still transforming, Terry. God is still providing, Pastor. God is still providing, Marty. God is still providing, Pastor. God is still providing, Sister. It's finished, but it ain't over. It ain't over. And Jesus is letting us know at this juncture, I don't need this body anymore. I don't need food anymore. I don't need Jenny Craig anymore. I don't need anything that man can give me. I am finished. And the tyranny of the devil, come on, work with me. Jesus cried out in every corridor in hell shook. Righteousness and peace, heaven trembled. This was the most momentous moment in history of humankind as blood kept on pouring out of Jesus' body. The transforming blood of Jesus. The blood of God in flesh, you know that part. The blood of the one who is mediator between God and man, that part. The blood of the light of the world, that part. The blood of the bread of light, that part. The blood of the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. That part, it's over, it's over, but it ain't over till the fat lady sings. Uh -huh. That part. The blood that was shed on Calvary, rushing from the crown, from every place where the nails were placed. That same blood became what the hymn writer refers to as that crimson stain. That same blood poured down from Calvary's mountain. And let me tell you something, that same blood still speaks, 
still cleanses, still renews, still protects. Let's praise God today because that same blood, it still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. It will never, never, never lose its power. Hey, I'm talking about the blood. Let's go. Come on. to this church and when he sent me he said be who you are and every Sunday ain't that right St. Mark I'm a dance I'm a play tambourines I'm a shout because this here house is a house of praise right now breath of God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Fill me with life anew that I would do exactly what you want me to do over the next 600 seconds. <laughs> no more, no less. Uh -huh. Nothing else. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart please be acceptable in only your sight. Yes, God. You are my rock, my strength, and my blessed redeemer. May the people of God are love God. Can we shout with the voice of triumph and not defeat? Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? And thank God. To the shepherd, the angel of this house, the one and only Reverend Paul P. Martin Esquire. Let's give the man of God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much, sir, for your spiritual sense of humor. Your spiritual sense of humor. God bless you, your lovely wife, your church family, your entire family, to the cadre of preachers and the proclaimers of hope. Let's give all of them a hand clap of praise as they blessed all of us real, real good. And to everybody under the sound of my voice, I greet all of you in the marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. God bless all of you. Luke chapter 23, I'm just going to read one verse for the sake of time. Verse 46, New International Version says, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For the 600 seconds 
that are mine. I want to preach as the spirit shall guide with this thought. I ain't going out like that. Come on, wake up your neighbor real quick. Come on, wake up your neighbor real quick. Say neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I don't know about you, but I ain't going out like that. God be glorified. Saints be edified. Sinners be justified. All of our demons and bad decisions and generational curses be horrified. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. The word darkness is mentioned in the Bible about 165 times. Darkness is a place of evil. And darkness has a profound effect on all of our mental, physical, and emotional health. Darkness is an aspect of chaos. Can y'all talk back to me and say chaos? chaos? And if you don't know, Bible lovers like my brother right here, darkness preceded light in creation. And unfortunately, some parts of the world are a dark place. It's been a dark week for black and brown America. Haiti continues to experience chaos and political instability and hunger and malnutrition. Also, it's been a dark week for us black and brown people. The federal government, the FBI, the Homeland Security, Rated three of Sean Diddy Combs' homes and dark stories continue to be viral on social media. And in Baltimore, not only did the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse and left at least six people in the darkness in the water, but political pundits have attacked Baltimore's 36 year old mayor the youngest mayor around, Brandon Scott, because Baltimore continues to be a bad neighborhood. And as we jaywalk into the text for a few moments, Jesus is having a dark day. The moon has lost control of its lunar position. The stars have no reason to sparkle. The sun refuses to shine. The earth shook and the rocks split. But Jesus called out with a loud voice. Y'all missed your first shout. Jesus was hanging on a cross for six hours. Jesus was whipped 39 times. Y'all talk back to me. I'll be sitting down faster. Amen. Jesus' beard was pill pulled out. Jesus was mistreated. He was mishandled. Jesus lost the blood. That still works, and it will never lose its power. Jesus was dehydrated, and the soldiers gave Jesus vinegar to drink. And the text says that Jesus called out with a loud voice. Y'all still missed it on this side of the sanctuary. Vinegar is a drying agent. I feel like preaching now. Vinegar dries out our vocal cords. Vinegar stops us from speaking. But the text says that Jesus called out with a loud voice. If the devil takes our voice, then the devil's got us. But Jesus said, not today, Satan. Come on, I need you to high-five your neighbor. Come on, high-five them real quick. <laughs> and tell that person in your context, uh, not today, Satan. <laughs> Come on, talk back to me if you can and I'll move. Not today, Satan. I need to say that one more time because that side over there needs deliverance. Uh, not today, Satan. Y'all got it because uh, I ain't going out like that. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm not preaching to you. Uh, I'm preaching to the person behind you this afternoon uh, because no matter how dark it gets in your life, uh, you better be determined uh, in your darkness. Uh, you better hold on to your voice. Uh, you better holler if you hear me. Come on. Come on. You better holler. Y'all missing it over there. You better holler every chance you get. Uh, you better speak truth to power. Uh, I don't care what they say. Uh, I don't care what it looks like. Uh, I don't care how you feel. Uh, the enemy Enemy wants to shut us up, uh, but the enemy can't shut us up. Uh, don't wait for your darkness to be over. You better shout right now. You better be determined 
in your darkness. Can you shout hallelujah? Can you shout praise the Lord? Can you shout thank you, Jesus? Can y'all shout amen? Please be seated. Jesus, he was determined in the darkness. Because Jesus prayed, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This is the third prayer from Jesus. First prayer was for them. I'm coming. The second prayer was for him. Third prayer was for himself. Jesus' first prayer was forgiveness. The second prayer was for forsakenness. And the third prayer was for his freedom. Jesus said, I took care of the sinners. I took care of the crowd. I took care of my mama. But now I got to take care of me. Somebody needs to turn right around there and say, I'm taking care of me this season. I done took care of everybody else. But I got to take care of me. I'm on the clock. Because I'm in darkness. Jesus said, when I'm in darkness, I don't need nobody else to pray for me. <laughs> I got to pray for myself. Jesus didn't pray with doubt or uncertainty or fear or anxiety or uncertainty. Come on, he prayed with determination. I'm looking for four determined people on this side of the church. <laughs> Just in case you can't get to your pastor, just in case you can't get to your presiding elder, just in case you can't get to Bishop McAllister, you better pray for yourself. Jesus could have, he could have came off that cross, Pastor Martin, but he didn't. But no matter what was going wrong, Jesus was determined, Sister Tammy, Brother Johnny, to not let the darkness break his spirit. Come on, we got some Beyonce in the house. You won't break my soul. Come on. I know she got country and all that, but come on, you better shout that into your spirit right now. You won't break my soul. You won't break my spirit. I'm moving. You won't break my heart. You won't break my mind right now. They broke his flesh. They pierced his side. They broke his brow. Jesus put it all in his hands and he took it out of his hands. Jesus said, I I ain't going out like that. Jesus prayed, Father, into your hands. I commend my spirit. Jesus gave forgiveness to folks at the bottom of the cross. Jesus gave a spot in paradise to one of the thieves. Jesus gave his mama to John. Jesus gave his body to the Sanhedrin council. Jesus gave his silence to Pontius Pilate. But Jesus gave his spirit. If I had time, I'd work that, but I don't. He gave his spirit only to God. I think I lost y'all on the fourth row over there, so let me come get you. Lord wanted me to prophetically to tell, tell y'all right now, everybody can't handle what we got. Somebody need to run right through there and say, I received that black man. You talking about me. Let me back that word up. That's what he said, right? Everybody can't handle what I got. Oh, I got to release that thing right over in that corner. Everything I got, everybody can't handle. Woo! Ah, there's some things only God should have from us. Jesus could have put himself in his own hands because Jesus is Jesus. But Jesus said, I'm putting my spirit to the Lord's hand. Maybe that's some of us. That's why some of us are in the mess we're in. Just blink three times. Just blink three times. Maybe that's why some of us are in the mess we're in. Uh huh. Maybe that's why some of us are always looking so dark and depressed and distracted and downtrodden because some of us are putting ourselves in the wrong people's hands. 
Some of us are putting our bodies in the wrong people's hands. Some of us are putting our finances in the wrong people's hands. Some people are putting our education in the wrong people's hands. Some of us are putting our car and our house in the wrong people's hands. But on this Friday, Good Friday, we got to put it all in his hands. I need somebody who loves Bishop Timothy Wright. And you need to preach me happy right now. And can you say this and that? I put it all in his hands. That and this. This and that. Come on, rock that neighbor. Rock that neighbor. Come on, grab that neighbor by the hand. And rock that neighbor back and forth. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. I said shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Say this and that. That and this. I put it all in his hands. Let me cut and paste. I'm closing when I tell you this. It's my first close. Eight or three points. Uh, I ain't going out like that because I'm determined in my darkness. I ain't going out like that because I'm delegating in my darkness. And here's the shout. Um, I ain't going out like that because I'm making a difference in my darkness. I ain't going out like that because I'm making a difference in the darkness. Let me undo my tie and holler for you. Um, Calvary was there before Jesus got there. The hill was there before Jesus got there. Place of the skull was there before Good Friday got there. But when Jesus got there, stay with me, Jesus made a difference in the darkness. The place of rejection <laughs> became a place of redemption. The place of sorrow became a place of joy. The place of fear became a place of faith. I did my homework. The place of defeat <laughs> became a place of victory. And the place of darkness became a place of marvelous light. Jesus went up the hill, a sacrifice, got to take my time, but he came down the hill, a savior. Jesus died for us so Jesus could keep us alive. Jesus made a difference in the darkness. And there was conversion in the darkness. Got to tell you a story. One of the greatest inventions in the world, believe it or not, don't, don't kick me out of the church when I tell you this. Right. It's not the red cup. <laughs> See, he's rubbing off on me with this humor. It is soft serve ice cream. Thank you for the amen. I don't know about you, but I love me some soft serve ice cream. Thank you. Love me some Dairy Queen. And can I get a witness on this side? Some Carvel. Some Stone Creamery. Y'all know about that? Cold Stone? You know, it used to take a lot of effort for people to have soft serve ice cream. But thank God there was an inventor who figured out a way to make this soft serve ice cream without a lot of effort. But for the real hardcore ice cream lovers in the house, you know about seal test? No? I done messed you up? Oh, I got two in the back. Thank you. So back in the day, we used to put the seal test out on the counter. Let that thing sit out there for two, three hours on the counter. Let that thing sit out there for three hours. Here's the point of the story. Once the atmosphere around the ice cream changes, then you'll see the difference in the ice cream. <laughs> Let 
time to clear my throat. God will change some folks when the atmosphere in our churches change. God, I'm coming. Can I do it like you do it? God changed the darkness all around Jesus because Jesus cried out with the loud voice of triumph. God changed the darkness all around Jesus because Jesus trusted God by praying to God in the darkness. God changed the darkness all around Jesus because the greatest act of love is now complete. Getting ready to ride. Atheists don't understand us on Good Friday. Muslims, God bless them in Ramadan. They don't understand us on Good Friday. Jehovah Witness don't understand us on Good Friday. They see our condition, but they don't celebrate our conversion. We don't hate God for the cross. We thank God for the cross. We don't hate God for the darkness. We love God for the darkness. I just came here to tell you, Jesus, he can't be understood. Jesus, he can't be explained. Jesus, he has to be experienced. Because my granddaddy used to say, can't nobody do me like the Jesus. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. I'm almost out of here. But I came here to tell you. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. They put a cross on Jesus' shoulder. They marched Jesus up Calvary's hill. They nailed his hands. They riveted his feet. They whipped my Jesus. But ain't the Lord all right? Come on, ain't the Lord all right? They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They crucified my Jesus. Let me tell the story and remind you that ain't the Lord all right? They pierced him in his side. They pulled out his beard. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders. Ain't the Lord all right? Took at your neighbor and tell your neighbor ain't the Lord all right come on ain't the Lord all right on this good Friday ain't the Lord all right then all of a sudden he died he died I said he died he died he died until the sun top shining can I tell the story he died until the moon turned blood orange he died until the earth rocked like Woody the Wino ain't the Lord all right he died until the centurion soldier said that surely I said surely was the son of the living God ain't the Lord all right then they placed him, my Jesus, in the borrowed tomb. Ain't the Lord all right? Come on, ain't the Lord all right? But that's not how the story ends. Because Jesus said, I ain't going out like that. I ain't going out like that. Ain't the Lord all right? Y'all ain't catching me yet. The Lord said, I ain't going out like that. Ain't the Lord all right? He sits high. He looks low. He makes every crooked path straight. Ain't the Lord all right? Y'all ain't catching me yet on this side. He's the lily in the valley. He's the bright the morning star. He's the wheel. Ain't the Lord all right? Ain't the Lord all right? Because early, can I grab the Baptist preacher over here? I said it. I said Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands ain't the Lord all right ain't the Lord all right ain't the Lord all right 
Ain't the Lord all right? Ain't the Lord all right? Ain't the Lord all right? Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but something happened in this place. Something happened in this place. Something happened in this place. I, I, I don't knew, but I got to praise and I just got to get it out. I, I don't know about you, but I got to praise and I just got to get it out. I, I got to praise and I, I just got to get it Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on. saved all your life. Y'all, I don't know where y'all heard that, but y'all, y'all, y'all got it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where y'all got that from. I'm a pastor. I don't know about that. Um, let me say this. Thank you to you. To you. To you. Give yourselves a hand of praise. Give yourself. Thank you. Um, I, and, I, and, I, and I say this, and I said it before, and I'll say it again. Of all the places you could have gone, you came here. And I'm so humbled and I'm so honored that you came to have this experience with St. Mark. Um, uh, let's, let, let's, 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 it's just us, it's just us. Hey, listen, it's just us. If you're online, it's just us. Let's do it same time next year. How about that? Now let's do this the same time next year. Amen? Amen. Now listen, it ain't over. We ain't going out like that. It ain't over. <laughs> Sunday morning. Early on Sunday morning. Uh, see, see, without a good Friday, there would be no Sunday morning. Find a place of worship. And worship him because... If it wasn't for the resurrection, this is all for nothing. He got up, and we should come on Sunday morning ready to give him praise. And I thank you, all of you, for blessing us with your word. I thank the musicians. I thank you, Sister Valerie. I thank you for allowing the vision that has been put in this preacher's spirit to come to fruition. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his shalom. From now until we meet again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Resurrection Sunday wherever you worship. May God bless you.